In this video, we're going to animate this in After Effects using the Puppet Paint tool and a free plugin called Twig Angular. So this is going to be the lesson 16 of the After Effects series where I'm going to teach you how to use the Puppet Paint tool in After Effects. And you can get the open file of this cat animation from the link in the description. So go get it from there and follow along with this lesson. And I'm also going to share with you the techniques that I have used to animate the bug and the clouds. So make sure to watch till the end. And without any further delay, let's jump right into it. So first, let's start with setting up the After Effects project. Let's start with creating a new composition. Name the composition. I'm keeping the resolution as 1920 by 1080 and the frame rate of 30. And let's give the duration of 20 seconds. And now let's import the illustration file. Just double click on the project panel, select the illustration file, add import as to composition written layer size. Create composition and import. And we can drag this composition in the timeline into the main composition. But before jumping onto the animation immediately, let's organize the project panel. Now let's see how to add puppet pins in After Effects. Open the composition, let's select the tail layer and let's start with the tail of the cat. Let's pre-comp this layer, get inside the pre-composition and go to the composition settings and we're going to increase the width and the height a little bit to give a little bit of breathing space for this illustration inside this composition window. Now let's select this illustration layer and this is the puppet pin tool. Click on it and to add it all you have to do is just click on the illustration and one puppet pin is added over here and we're going to add few puppet pins over here so that this area is completely attached with the cat body. Now from this area, we're going to move the tail of the cat. So let's add one pin over here, one over here, then one over here, one over here and one over here. So I'm adding these puppet pins in the tail thinking about how I'm going to bend the tail of this cat. So after adding the pins and under the puppet, there is a property called mesh. If you click on it, you can see the mesh of the puppet. Here at the top, you can turn on or turn off the mesh. And from here, expansion and density, you can modify the mesh. So if you decrease the expansion to, let's say, minus 10, it's going to decrease it too much. And you may get issues like this. It may add some cutout effect in your illustration. So make sure to add some extra area in your mesh. So for this one, 40 was good. And from here, you can decrease or increase the density. By default, it's most probably be around three or four. So if you decrease it to four, you can see how the density of the mesh has changed. And if we increase it, the maximum you get is 12. So by increasing the density, you can get a better quality render. But at the same time, it's going to use up lots of resources. Okay, now let's turn on Dweek Angela. If you don't have Dweek Angela installed in your system, then you can download it from their official website for absolutely free. And then install it in After Effects and you're good to go. And after installing it, go to Windows and find Dweek Angela from here. Here is mine. Click on it. So if the layer is deselected, you cannot see the puppet pins. To see the puppet pins, you have to select the puppet property under effects. Now puppet pins are visible. Under puppet, there is mesh one. Inside mesh one, there is a property called deform. And here you get all the puppet pins. If you select one puppet pin from here or from the illustration itself, you can move it. And inside this property, you only have the position property. So if you animate only the position property like this, things may get too messy, especially when you have so many puppet pins in a single layer. On top of that, you cannot parent one puppet pin to the other just like the way you do it with layers in the timeline. And that is the reason we're going to use the Dweek Angular. So you can select the puppet pins. For that, you can either select the puppet property under effects. Now all the puppet pins are selected. Or you can select individual puppet pins, click on one puppet pin, Press and hold the shift key and select the other puppet pins. Now click on links and constraints, then add pin. Now all the puppet pins have individual layers. Now we can rename the layers and we can parent these layers in this direction. So 5 with 4, 4 with 3, 3 with 2 and 2 with 1. Now if we open the rotation property and just rotate it like this, we can get a nice tail animation. 
Now let's animate the puppet pins in After Effects. So select the first puppet pin layer, open the rotation property, add keyframes on it, and just rotate it by 8 degree. Let's jump on to around 3 seconds and let's give the rotation minus 8. And now let's jump on to next around 3 seconds and copy and paste the initial keyframe. Select the keyframe, easy as 8. And now we're going to add a loop expression in this rotation property to loop the animation in between these keyframes. So the expression is loop in plus loop out minus the value. And now we're going to select these three keyframes, copy it. It's going to copy with the expressions. Then move the time indicator at the very start. Select the other three pin layers and Ctrl V to paste the keyframes. It's going to paste it in the rotation property itself. Now we can offset these keyframes to add a little bit of follow through. So let's offset it by around 20 frames. And here we have a nice tail waving animation. Now let's do the same for the body layer. So let's pick on this illustration layer and just increase the width and the height a little bit to give a little bit of breathing space for the illustration. So now let's start with adding the puppet pins. So select the puppet pin and let's start with adding puppet pins in a straight line over here because we don't want any movement from here. And we can add few puppet pins over here as well. Add just one puppet pin over here and also let's add one over here and we only need to move this one up and down. So select this puppet pin and click on add pin and this one single puppet pin is converted into a puppet layer. Let's open the position property, separate the dimension, let's add a keyframe on the Y position property. Let's jump on to next around 45 frame. Select this layer and move it down a little bit. We can move to the previous keyframe and let's move it up a little bit. Again, from the second keyframe, let's jump on to next 45 frame and copy and paste the initial keyframe which completes the entire loop and is this the keyframe and add the loop expression. So we can just copy and paste it from the tail composition. And this adds a nice breathing effect for this cat slipping animation. And in the similar way, you can animate the head, the ears and the leaves using the puppet pins. So for the ears and the hand, I have timed the keyframes with the bug animation. So the initial few frames are still. Then when the bug sits on the nose of the cat, there is a little movement for the ears and the hand. Then settles down with follow through and overlap. And after that, there are another few still frames with no animation. And then I have added the loop expression to loop the animation in between these keyframes. Okay, now let's animate the bugs in After Effects. So select the pen tool and draw a shape path in a way you want your bug to be animated. And now we can add a very small circle shape. And let's name it bug. Now open the shape path that we have drawn earlier with the pen tool. Inside contains, inside shape 1, inside path 1, we are going to select the path property, Control c to copy and select the bug, open the position property and paste it. And we can turn off the visibility of the shape path that we have drawn earlier. Now we have the animation for the bug, but we can even select the first and the last keyframe and easy is it. And the in between keyframes are here, the row across time keyframes. Let's jump onto the motion graph editor and change it to speed graph, we're going to start the animation very fast. End it with a little ease. And here we have it. I think we can speed up the animation a little bit. Yeah, this one is looking even better. And then we're going to apply an effect called echo and apply it on the ship. Now echo time, let's change it to minus 0 0.0002. Let's increase the number of echoes to 100. Also, echo operator to maximum. And now let's check out the animation. Now you can see a nice smear effect added on the bug animation. And finally, let's animate the clouds in After Effects. So let's start with creating a new composition for clouds with a square resolution. And now let's add few circle shapes. Also, let's change the color to white and duplicate the shape few more time and distribute it. And just vary the scaling of the shapes. 
to make it look like an actual cloud. And now let's rename the layers. And now we are going to open the position property of all the layers. Select it, right click and separate the dimensions. And we are going to add an expression on the X position property. So we are going to add a wiggle expression. Press and hold the Alt key and click on the property and type in wiggle with a frequency of 1, comma, the amplitude of 8. And we are going to copy this expression and paste it in other properties. And now if we preview the animation, you can see a nice movement between the circle shapes. We are going to do the same for the scale property as well. So press S to open the scale property and enter the wiggle expression. And this time, frequency of 0 0.6, comma, the amplitude of 5. And just copy and paste the wiggle expression to rest of the circle layers. And here we have the final shape animation. Okay, let's pre-comp this all the shapes together again. And let's apply an effect called Gaussian Blur with blurness of around 25. Again, apply another effect called Matte Choker. Let's decrease the geometric softness 1 to 0. Choke 1, let's decrease it to 30. Now you can see a nice blending between the shapes. And if we preview the animation, you can see we have those animations, but all the shapes are blended together. And finally, we are going to add a mask on top of this composition. So select the rectangle shape, select the composition and draw a rectangle shape. Under mask, we can increase the feathering. And now we have this cloud animation. Alright, so that is it for this video. I hope you learned something new that you can use in your future project. So if you like the video, then make sure to hit the like button. If you have any doubt regarding the techniques, then make sure to comment down below. I'd be happy to help you out. And if you're here for the first time, then make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell notification button to stay notified for all the future updates. Until then, goodbye.